What's up, YouTube? In today's lesson, we're going to cover some JavaScript fundamentals. We'll be using codesandbox.io, so feel free to create a free account if you'd like to follow along. Let's click New Sandbox and scroll down to a Static Project. It's going to spin up an HTML site for us, and whenever we're writing JavaScript, we usually want it to go right before the closing body tag. So on a new line, we'll create open and closing script tags that look like this. The second script tag has the forward slash right there. Inside of those script tags, this is where we can write our JavaScript. So we'll start with a very simple alert command that just says alert and we'll open up parentheses. And inside that, let's type the year that will go down in history, 2020. We'll hit command S to save. And then to open this in a new window, we'll just click this icon here and our site is loaded up and it says uh, alert 2020. So congrats, you've written your first line of JavaScript. So whenever we're writing JavaScript, we usually wanna have a separate file for all our script instead of putting it directly inside the HTML. So we'll click this new file icon and type script.js for our file name. And then inside there, we'll just cut out the script that we wrote there and put it inside our script file. And now we just need to link up this script tag to our file. So we'll type SRC, which stands for source, and set it equal to the name of our file. And now we can save. And if we head back to our site, it's working just the same way it was before. So we're just referencing our script file within our HTML. So let's write some more JavaScript. We'll head over to our script file. Let's delete the line we wrote so far. And the first thing we're gonna talk about is variables. Variables are just a way to store information. The old way we used to declare a variable was to type var, but the modern best practice is to say let or let, and then we can name our variable whatever we'd like. Now, whenever we're naming variables, we can't use spaces, so it's all one word, and then each word starts with a capital letter except the first word. For instance, if I had my game points, you'll notice only the first word, my, doesn't start with a capital letter. This is called camel case. We also end each line with a semicolon. So variables can hold different types of information and to set a value to a variable, all we have to do is have a space and equal sign and then we can set that variable to anything we'd like. In this case, I'll set it to 500. So now my game points is equal to 500 and anytime I reference my game points, it's gonna pull up that number. For instance, if on a new line, I type alert and I decide to alert the my game points and I save you'll notice that it's alerting 500 because that's what my game points is equal to. But we can also update the value of a variable. On a new line, we can set my game points equal to 400 this time. And we're only using let the first time we declare a variable. Anytime we want to update it, we don't have to use let in front of it anymore. So now my game points was 500. We have updated it to 400. And when we run our alert, it's gonna pull up the latest value. So if we save, it pulls up 400. So that's how we can set a variable and update it. So that's the first type is a number type. And I'm gonna add a comment right above here by adding two forward slashes and set this to number. So this is just notes for you as a developer that'll be in your code, but not on the text on the live site. Um, so this is the first type, a number. Another type that we can have in our variables is a string. And a string is just plain text. So I'll say let username, I'll set this equal to a string. Now we can't just type, you know, a string like this, it needs to be surrounded by quotes. And that's how we know it is a string. And those quotes could be single or double quotes. Either one works perfectly fine in JavaScript. The only issue we'll have here is say we want it an apostrophe right here. Now it's treating this like the end of the string. So when we have an apostrophe using double quotes around the whole thing sort of fixes that issue. So that way it knows this is the real end of the string. And again, we just end the line with a semicolon. So now we have our username and that is a string. The next type we have is a Boolean. And Booleans uh, can basically be true or false. They're one or the other. So if I set a variable called let uh, can fight, my user can fight and I set this to true. This is a uh, text, but it doesn't need to be surrounded by quotes because it's actually a Boolean value. It's true or false. So those are the two options. So we could set this either or, and uh, that's the type of value we can have there. Another type of value we can have inside a variable is an element. So if I set let sprite, and if I wanna reference a div or an image with a particular ID on my site, I could do something like document dot get element 
uh, by ID. And then I could pass in an ID inside of a string. So it would need the pound sign for Sprite. And then now this is referencing a div with an ID of Sprite somewhere on my site. So this is storing basically that div. And anytime I want to reference that div, I can just use my variable below to reference it. Now let's look at some math we can do in JavaScript. I'm going to delete this line and copy my game points variable name up here and paste it below. So what if we wanted to update the value of this variable? We could use addition, so maybe 50 plus 10 in the line with a semicolon, and then let's go ahead and alert the new value of our variable. And then if we save, we'll notice the value is 60. We could also do 50 minus 10 like this, and then now we have 40. We could do 50 times 10 by using the asterisk and save that, and we have 500. Or we could do 50 divided by 10 by using the forward slash and save that, and we have five. But we can also get the previous value of that variable right here. So now it'll be the previous value was 500. So we'll take that 500, divide it by 10, and update the variable to the new value. So now if we save that, we should see that this is 50. We could easily change that to multiply it by the 500 and save, and now it's 5,000. So it'll just take whatever the value of this variable was before and then use that to update the new value here. So what if we wanted to combine a string with a number or even a string with another string? This is called concatenation. I'm going to create a new variable called message, and then I'll go ahead and set this to a string called congratulations, you got, and then I want to plug in my game points variable, that number right there. So I'm just going to use a plus sign to add this in. I'll say game points, and then I will use another plus sign to add a string at the end called points. And then on a new line, let's just type alert, and we're going to alert our message variable we created above. So let's save this, and it says, congratulations, you got 500 points. But there's no space uh, after the word got or before the word points. So we're going to add a space at the end of this string and the beginning of this one and hit save. And now it says, congrats, you've got 500 points, and it's pulling from our points variable. But this can get a little bit messy, especially when we need to add multiple dynamic bits inside of a string. So I'm going to create a new variable underneath called message2. And I'll set this equal to our static string again. And I'll say you got. But instead of surrounding it by quotes, let's surround it with backticks like so. And now this allows us to plug in a dynamic variable by using the dollar sign and the squiggly brackets and then plug in my game points like so, and then I can just add this all in in one string and it's dynamically pulling this in. Let's even add in another variable. So I'll just add in one right here with the squiggly brackets and we'll pull from our username that we have set above. And now if we alert message two, let's try it out and save. So it says, congratulations, Timothy Ricks, you've got 500 points. And you'll see how much cleaner this is. Instead of having to use multiple strings and plus signs to combine it all, we can put it all on one line. So next, let's look at functions. Functions are another core building block of JavaScript and are a great way to group together related bits of code that we plan to reuse again and again. So to create a function, we just type the word function, and then we can name it just like we name our variables. In this case, I'll call it increase points. We add open and close parentheses and open and close squiggly brackets. And inside those brackets, we can type our code. So I'll type a new variable called new points, and I'll set it equal to 700. And then I'm going to add an alert inside this function. And I want to alert the string that we created up here. And then let's end the line with a semicolon. So if we save this, we'll notice nothing actually happens. So to run a function after we create it, we need to copy the name of the function with the parentheses and end it with a semicolon. This is how we actually execute that function when we're ready to run it. So if we hit enter now and save, we'll notice it's running our function here. So what if we wanted to update maybe this new points variable? We would want to use that inside of our string right here. And for now, we'll just put a static text for our user. I'll say congratulations, Tim. And we save that, and we have this function running. So the great thing about functions is that we can pass in uh, data into this function every time we run it, it can run with different sets of information. So we can define what those sets are. Maybe I call this uh, set user, and then I'll create comma space and add another set 
called points. So whenever we run our function, we get to define what users and points are. So in this case, my user will be a string. It will be uh, Michael uh, Scott. And then I'll add a comma here. And then my other set of data, my points will be 200. So when I run this, I can basically use that uh, right here. So if I just copy the points uh, plus 100, and then right here when I wanna plug in the name, I can just add in my user variable that we created up here. So when this function runs, it's gonna pass in Michael Scott as the user, and it's gonna pass in 200 as the points. So points 200 will be used here, and Michael Scott will be used here for the name. So if I save this, and run it, it says, congrats, Michael Scott, you've got 300 points because it's adding that in. And the great thing about this function is I can reuse it whenever I want. So if I say, congrats, Timothy Ricks, and I pass in 100 points and save, now it'll run this two times, the first time for Michael Scott and the second time for me. And it's uh, using those dynamic data inside of our function. An important note is that once a variable is created inside of a function, it can only be used inside of that function. So for instance, if I were to try to alert uh, new points, you'll see it's throwing an error because it can't find the variable new points. But if I would have created that variable outside of the function and then just redefined it inside of this function, then it doesn't throw the error. I can alert new points because this is a global variable. It's not specific to the one function. So we can create variables as either global or specific to a particular function. Lastly, let's look at a way to add a bit of logic to our project using if else statements. So if else statements allow us to check for a condition. And to create one, we type the word if, open up parentheses, add a space, open up squiggly brackets, similar to the way we write our functions. Inside these parentheses, we can check for a condition. In this case, I'll check to see if my can fight variable is equal to true. And to do equals inside of an if else statement, we add two equal signs, and then I'll check to see if it's equal to true. If that's the case, I'm gonna alert. And then what I wanna alert is a string called let's go. And then let's end the line with a semicolon. So let's save this and check it out. So it says let's go because can fight is equal to true. What if I change can fight to be equal to false? Now, if I save this, nothing happens. So we can also check if our condition is not met. What if can fight is actually equal to false? To do that, we just type the word else behind this last squiggly bracket and then open up more brackets. And here I'm gonna alert another string. And then what I'm gonna alert is something that says collect a sword first to fight and in the line with a semicolon. And now if I save, you'll see I actually get that message because can fight is currently equal to false. So my condition is not met and it's running my else statement. We can also check if a condition is not met. So if we delete this part here and we add an exclamation point, now we're saying if can fight is not equal to true, run this statement. And if we save, sure enough, the statement is run, collect a sword of fight because can fight is set to false. Another thing we can do is check for numbers. So in this case, I'm gonna check uh, my game points and I'm going to see if it is greater than uh, 100. And then if that's the case, I'll say uh, you have at least 100 points. And let's save this. And it is true because we have at least 100 points and our points is 500, it's greater than 100. To wrap this up, let's put it into practice with a real working example. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new file and I'll call this game.js. And then I'll go ahead and copy the URL to my site. And then I'm gonna search for that game.js file. And here's my script file. I'm gonna head over to my project and I'll leave the link to the live site here in the description of this video if you'd like to check it out. But basically I'm just gonna import this script file so I can use it directly on my site. So here we have sort of this game that I built out and we have all these items with either a class of good or bad, whether or not we want it to collect points. And then we have this item here with this class of time for our countdown timer. So let's create a basic timer. So we're gonna use a different type of function, which is a set interval function. This runs the same code over and over again at a set interval. So if we basically save this, we're saying every thousand milliseconds or every one second, do the same action over and over again. And we're gonna create a global variable 
that will be called timer and we'll set it equal to five seconds. So what we're gonna do here is redefine what the timer is. We'll say timer equals the current time minus one. And this is gonna happen every second. And then we also wanna update the text on our page to show that. So I'm gonna copy this class name and then right here inside my code, I'm gonna select that element. So we've done the whole document get element by ID, but this project actually uses jQuery. So it's an easier way to select elements with the jQuery library. We can just use the dollar sign, open and close parentheses, open up a string, and inside that add the period for our class name. And then there we just wanna change the text of the element. So we'll do dot text, open up the parentheses, and set the text to be equal to our timer variable. If we refresh, we should notice that time goes from four to three, and it's counting down every second. After it hits zero though, it starts counting down negative numbers. So if we wanna stop it before it goes negative, we can basically create a simple if statement. And we're gonna to check to see if the timer is greater than zero. So it's at least one, we'll open up our brackets, that's when we wanna run this code, if the timer is greater than zero. So if we save that and come over here and refresh, we'll notice that it's four, three, two, one, and at zero, it just stops and it doesn't keep going. So it's ending right there. Now, if the timer does reach zero, we wanna show a certain div with a class of game end, which is just gonna say game over. So right here, we'll basically copy that. And then what we're gonna do is create an else part inside of our code. So we're saying if the timer is greater than zero, count down, else the timer is not greater than zero, we just wanna basically grab that game over div and set it to show like so, and that way we can see it. So let's save that. And sure enough, our timer's counting down and by the time it reaches zero, it shows the game over div. Now we don't want the timer to start till you click on that start now button. So the start now button has a class of start. Outside of the set interval function, we'll create another function here. We'll be targeting that class of start and this function is gonna be a click function that we can write like so. And we'll type the word function, open up our parentheses, open up our squiggly brackets. And then inside of this click function is where we want to run our set interval function right there. So if we save this, now our timer isn't gonna start counting down until we click on the start now button, that's when it starts. We also wanna hide this overlay so we can show the game underneath. So we'll copy the class of this whole overlay and inside of our click function, we're gonna grab that overlay element and we'll do dot hide to hide it and save. And now when we click start now, it hides and our countdown timer starts. And when our timer reaches zero seconds, it shows the game over. Let's also create our point tracking. So whenever we click on the item with the class of good, we'll wanna add some points. So we'll copy this click function here, and we're gonna target any time we click on an item with the class of good. We don't need a set interval anymore, uh, but we do need a global variable that we'll call points, and we'll set it equal to zero by default. Anytime we click on the class of good, we're gonna grab our points variable and we're gonna set it equal to whatever the points are plus five each time. And then we wanna grab basically this points text on our page right here. And we're just gonna select that element by the class name. And then we're gonna update its text to our new points variable right there. So this is gonna happen anytime we click on a good item. Then anytime we click on a bad item like so, all we wanna do is basically subtract the existing points by five and still update the text. I'm gonna set this timer to be a little bit longer so we can see. And now let's go head over to our game, refresh, and let's get started. So our timer starts. If we click on a bad item, we're negative five points. If we click on maybe a good item, we gain those points back. And let's try and find another good item. We gain another five points and now our game is over. So that's it. We've covered variables, functions, and logic. This is just the start of all JavaScript can do. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson and I'll catch you in the next video.